Councilor Boschman, you will lead us in the, the flag, please. Would you call the roll, please? President Hay. Here. Councilor Bean. Councilor Boschman. Present. Councilor Bezal. Councilor Clark. Here. Councilor Dean Natale. Here. Councilor Green. Here. Councilor Joseph. Here. Councilor Caddy. Here. Councilor Kushmeric. Present. Councilor Tran. Here. We will now have the public forum. Anybody wishing to speak on any matter on the agenda may do so for not more than two minutes. If you are addressing a public hearing petition, you'll have an opportunity to speak at that time. Please approach the Senate table and identify yourself by name and address for the record and the item number on the agenda you are addressing. Does anyone wish to speak? Hearing none, we move forward to the report of the Committee on Records. Councilor Green. Yes, I'd like to report that the minutes from the last meeting are in order. Move that the Records Committee report be accepted. Second. We have a motion to second that the Records Committee report be accepted. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? It is unanimous. Moving forward, we will go to the Appointments Committee. Appointments Committee met this evening, Tuesday, May 19, 2015, at 715. There was one item on the agenda, the appointment of two new permanent firefighters for the Fitchburg Fire Department, Matthew S. Glennie, Jeffrey K. Boudreaux, and the committee voted unanimously to make the appointments. Motion to accept the Appointments Committee report and to the second uh, appointments to be confirmed. We have a motion and second to accept the committee's report and confirm the appointments. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? It is unanimous. If the uh, gentleman would come forward to be sworn in by the clerk. <coughs> no, come in here. You face up. Oh, I do solemnly promise and swear that I will faithfully and impartially and to the best of my knowledge and ability perform and discharge all the duties incumbent upon me as a permanent Fitchburg firefighter for the city of Fitchburg. So help me God. Coming around, shake it the way you say it. Okay. 
guess we have to sit there. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Graham, I can send it to you. I was um, I was out getting some extra stuff. I like that. <laughs> 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 right. Congratulations. Congratulations. Be safe. You're welcome. Congratulations. Be safe. Congratulations. Congratulations. Sorry. Okay. Communications from Harana the Mayor. Dear Honorable Counselors, I hereby reappoint and ask your confirmation of Ms. Maureen McSheehy of 250 Mount Vernon Street, Fitchburg, Mass., as a member of the Council on Aging for a term to expire on January 1, 2016. Sincerely, Lisa A. Wong, Mayor. Dear Honorable Counselors, I hereby reappoint and ask your confirmation of Mr. Peter Christensen of 109 Pace and Circle, Fitchburg, Mass., as a member of the Council on Aging for a term to expire. On January 1st, 2017, Mr. Christensen's appointment is to fill the position vacated by Mr. Paul Jornet. Uh, sincerely, Lisa A. Wong, Mayor. Dear Honorable Counselors, I hereby reappoint and ask your confirmation of Mr. Peter Kettle of 45 for McIntyre Road, Fitchburg, Mass., as a member of the Airport Commission for a term to expire on February 1st, 2018. Sincerely, Lisa A. Wong, Mayor. Dear Honorable Counselors, I hereby appoint and ask your confirmation of Mr. Donald Lassler of 421 Alpine Road, Fitchburg, Mass., as a member of the Trustees of Public Burial Grounds for a term to expire on January 1, 2018. Mr. Lassler will fill the remaining term of Mr. Rodney Goudreau. Mr. Lassler has previously served on the Trustees of Public Burial Grounds, and we are excited that he is interested in returning. Sincerely, Lisa A. Wong, Mayor. Moving forward to the agenda. Councilors, we're going to have a special presentation from the Honorable Lisa A. Wong, Mayor, regarding the fiscal year 2016 budget and the Fitchburg Organizational Study of IT Law and Purchasing by the Edward J. Collins Junior Center for Public Management at uh, Boston State University. The Mayor will make the presentation. Councilors, this is an informational presentation by the Mayor. She expects that we'll get this information and use this during our budget process. And we will have uh, representatives from the Edward J. Collins Junior Center for Public Management before you on June 2nd at a council meeting. And at that time, we can ask, ask questions and, and get information re regarding that process. Madam Mayor. Good evening, Councilors. Um, as you know, a fiscal year 2016 operating budget was submitted to the council on Friday. Um, in conjunction with this operating budget, a study by the Collins Center at UMass Boston will be presented. Right now, it is still in uh, draft form. I know that the Collins Center folks are working very hard. Um, the process for looking at this particular analysis of the IT Law and Purchasing Department began uh, with meetings last August. And after several meetings were held, a scope of services was developed, an RFP was developed um, that was sent out for advertising. A number of firms um, put in a request for uh, the proposals and we were able to select the call center and we've been working with them diligently ever since, um, including getting emails from them, questions up until um, I left the office around 4.30 today and, and uh, we're gonna be um, back online, kind of commuting back and forth um, with the call center after 8.30 today. So they've been working around the clock to try to get this forward to you. There are um, a number of uh, meetings and conversations that we've had so I was able to create a PowerPoint presentation that just has a very very overarching summary um, from what I can see there 
uh, analysis is going to be very detailed. Um, I mean, very specific. I mean, for example, there's one recommendation that um, about the templates and procurement about how some are in Excel and should be in Word because it's very difficult. Um, I mean, it, it's really um, pretty detailed. So you'll, you'll see a lot of that in the report. Um, we've asked them if they could come to the June 2nd meeting. They are checking their schedule and haven't come back to us. So hopefully um, they can either come to the June 2nd meeting or we will have another meeting um, that is good for everybody so that they can go into detail their process, um, their methodology. I know that they've been looking at um, many other municipalities similar to Fitchburg. So they're trying to look at um, other cities' budgets, um, other cities' volume of work to try to compare those as well as make recommendations on um, how better to improve our systems. So the PowerPoint that I put together, I'm actually going to ask uh, Bill if she could help me with the slides. So the, the first section is on IT and then I'm going to go over um, some things with uh, law and procurement. So the IT department was centralized in 2008 um, following a recommendation by the DOR. I think many of you were here when that report came out. It had a number of financial recommendations to the city, including uh, necessitating creating an IT department. We consolidated two individuals, um, somebody that worked in planning and somebody that worked in the police department to create um, this IT department. And we also consolidated all the expenses um, all the various IT expenses in the departments, and then we actually slashed that budget by over $100,000. And we said, you know, here's your new budget, you know, here you go, and they were able to meet that. Um, we had a grant-funded help desk technician um, for just about three years at 19 hours per week. Um, that individual left um, to pursue a full-time position in the private sector. Uh, we've actually been unable to fill this position. Um, it was originally at $13 an hour. We then advertised it at $18 an hour, and we've had difficulty filling it. This is going to be addressed in the report as well in terms of providing the help that we need. Um, <clears throat> some of the findings are that the departments that were interviewed are generally happy with the services provided. Um, the call center does believe that IT needs um, not to operate in isolation, that they need a stronger vision, that they need stronger oversight, and they need a game plan. Um, it was confusing to them as to who IT reports to and who dictates um, what they do. And so they have some recommendations that I'll go into. Um, <clears throat> they did find that the IT is under-resourced, which can lead to slow response time. Um, a lot of that was really related to um, two higher level technicians who were spending a lot of time doing help desk work, um, doing things that could be done by uh, an intern. So they recommended things like if even just their oversight over phones could be transferred to another clerk, um, that that would help free up a lot of their time. Um, so that's going to be looked at. They said that IT needs to uh, figure out how to be more customer friendly and let users know when problems are going to be fixed. So if they're jumping from fixing one thing to another to another to another, a lot of times the people and the list of to be served aren't, don't necessarily know where they fall on the list, when they're going to be helped, or how fast the fix is going to be. Um, they also found that IT is very hardware oriented. So there's a lot of talk, and you'll see us come before you for requests for um, tablets and for security systems and for the website, for example. But um, one of the problems that we face is that a lot of the uh, employees in the city are not very well versed in Munis or in even Microsoft Word. And our uh, IT staff spends a lot of time helping on those very basic software things. So some trainings recommended there. So the next slide, um, some of the goals that, um, and actually that should say fiscal year 16, not 15, but some of the goals are that IT should be responsible for all IT related activities in the city, <clears throat> that they need to create a plan, uh, we need to improve customer service, save money, and develop an annual IT plan and link it to the city's capital improvement plan. So some of the recommendations that we are incorporating into fiscal year 16 um, that are made um, through our conversations are to transfer Munis oversight to IT, um, to create an IT steering committee that can align the IT strategy with the city's strategic goals, like saving money or improving online services. So this is one of the um, recommendations in terms of who should provide that strategic oversight over IT in terms of developing that annual plan and then holding them accountable. Um, and then 
providing IT with contract help desk or clerical support. So you'll see that there's a general line item around $30,000 in the budget that can be used for that. Um, and we've looked at, um, uh, I think clerical services are around $15 an hour. Um, help desk services range from 13 to 18. There's also some possibilities of getting some interns. So um, we're really looking at targeting either volunteer help, part-time help. We're not looking at bringing on additional full-time um, staff in that line item. Um, there is a recommendation to provide training to employees, i.e. Microsoft Word, Munis, and so on, um, and also having IT report to a chief operating officer. The next slide for procurement. Um, this department currently consists of three employees, a, uh, and I'll just say CPO, DPO, APO. So basically chief, deputy, and assistant purchasing officer. Um, from 89 to 95, there are actually four employees in purchasing. Um, they, it consisted of a purchasing agent who was actually our current city auditor. Uh, there was also an assistant, uh, sorry, a, there was an uh, assistant purchasing agent who was our current um, chief procurement officer. There was a purchasing assistant. This was actually funded by the school, so there's precedent for the position we have right now. And there was a clerk. Um, over the last 20 years, um, the staff in that department has fluctuated between two and four. At one point in time, there was actually two clerks. And at a low, there was uh, two full-time staff members. So some of the findings, the staff is seen to be technically competent by the departments interviewed. Um, there is a need to streamline the process. The call center is actually um, dictating what the process is. I think there's like a 14-step process for how they go through procurement. So there's a need to streamline that. Um, there is a need to invest in more Munis modules or scheduling software. Um, Munis is our uh, system that we use for uh, financial and auditing. So we use it and it's often um, used by the auditor and the treasurer and the assessors. Uh, but there are also purchasing modules. And the call center report has actually looked and costed out a lot of those modules. Um, and those are things that are not built into the budget. Uh, but those are things that we want to consider. Um, they do say, for example, that even after you purchase the modules, if you purchase all the purchasing modules, then the yearly admin costs are $35,000. So they said you really need to look at, at balancing out buying technology and also investing in part-time staff and figuring out which one is a better fit, which one is, has more cost savings for the city. Um, there's a need for more training for departments to understand how to develop scope <coughs> of services. Um, they looked at a lot of case studies, and one of the big conflicts is that um, a lot of departments um, have either tried to avoid, avoid um, writing scope of services um, or don't know how to write scope of services. And a scope of services is basically what is it that they're trying to do? What are they trying to fix? What are they trying to build? What are they trying to maintain? Um, the difficulty there is that the purchasing agent cannot tell a department what they're trying to build or maintain. A department must actually figure out what is it that they need in order to then tell the purchasing department what it is that they need help to obtain. Um, so there has to be a lot more training around how to develop those skills. Um, the way that we've sort of done it right now is to have departments who are better at it help departments that have never, never done it or are not good at it. Um, there is a need for departments to submit projects beforehand so that projects can be scheduled at the beginning of each year. This was done last year, um, but even though we requested the departments submit their budgets to be their uh, projects to be scheduled, um, a lot of departments didn't tell us all the projects that they were doing um, and still came in at the last minute and said, you know, oh, by the way, we're doing this project. And when that happens, we've already scheduled other projects. We have to stop projects and then insert those projects. Um, so we're in the process of doing it again for this year. A memo has gone out to all department heads to submit all of their projects for next year by the end of May so they can be scheduled. Um, there is a need for departments to estimate annual needs and submit one requisition requisition versus multiple each year. Um, there are some departments where we have requisitions that come in multiple times a day, multiple times a week uh, for the same thing, um, which is very time consuming. So we really need to work with departments to say how much sodium sulfate do you need, for example, how much rock salt do you need. Um, there are some specific items that the call and sender actually has picked out and said, these are things that you buy every year. Instead of coming in with multiple a week or multiple a day, you really need to estimate and have one big contract so that you're not overburdening the office. Um, so there's also a need to put in place multi-year contracts or even one-year contracts with uh, two one-year renewals versus short-term contracts. 
The next page, um, goal, save money, same time, um, improve coordination, um, professional development, increasing transparency and improving relationships. Um, the recommendations that we have in the budget are to combine the chief operating officer and chief procurement officer position. Um, so we would be looking at hiring somebody with um, a greater management skill set and giving them the um, designation within the budget to um, designate procurement. Um, the recommendation is to reduce full-time staff and to hire part-time staff or consultants. Um, another recommendation is to invest in scheduling and Munis software. Um, there's a recommendation to increase house doctor and on-call contracts. Um, we've done this for a couple of water and sewer projects over the past year and this has worked out really well. Um, this really saves time and money. Increased trainings and standardized templates. Um, they actually go into depth, but they're looking at all the templates. Apparently, we have a lot of templates, and there really needs to be um, simplified um, templates that can be used for multiple projects because people have a hard time knowing which template they should use, and that oftentimes uh, delays projects. Moving on to the law department, um, it consists of our city solicitor and an assistant city solicitor. Um, the mayor appoints the city solicitor on an annual basis, and then the city solicitor appoints the assistant city solicitor, and both are currently employees of the city. Findings, uh, the staff is well regarded. Um, more and regular access to the law staff is highly desirable by departments. The city solicitor should have the mayor sign timesheets rather than directly working with payroll. And the law department should send a spending plan memo to the mayor prior to each fiscal year. Um, so the goals of the law department is to save money, improve coordination, increase face time, improve time and work tracking, and reduce time working on procurement issues. Um, there was a number of departments who um, really requested working directly with uh, the city solicitor, and but oftentimes he would be tied up trying to um, deal with an issue with procurement between the departments, so uh, that was seen to be taking up too much time. Some recommendations is to um, develop an RFP for the next mayor to review and consider. Uh, one of the things the call center is looking at is I think they're looking at four or five different ways in which cities and towns throughout the Commonwealth have it structured. So they're um, kind of labeling the different models of um, having legal services and then uh, they're sort of comparing and contrasting um, some of the staffing, some of the, t um, the costs, and uh, they're recommending that um, we look at developing an RFP and then you know there'll be a next uh, new mayor next year since the city ordinance does leave it up to the mayor to decide you know we'll just develop the RFP and do some of the groundwork and then allow the next mayor to figure out what um, they want to do with the law department um, but in the meantime we're looking at the law department creating regular office hours I know that currently um, our city solicitor assistant city solicitor will tell departments when they're in office so they'll say you know I'll be in on Friday in the morning or I'll be on the Thursday in the afternoon um, but I think trying to schedule more regular hours so that they're consistent um, is good that the law department sum submits a spending plan to the mayor um, we often talk about a spending plan in regards to the big expenses like labor uh, but they're saying the expense plan should even include things like copier paper if needed um, the mayor should sign off on weekly timesheets. Um, right now, I sign off on time off, personal days, sick days, and so on. So if there's 52 um, uh, weeks in the year and John takes two weeks off and has one week of sick days, then I sign off on those, which is basically signing off on three requests to take time off. But they're requesting that they have a regular timesheet 52 weeks out of the year that I sign off on. So even if it just says in a full week, working a full week, um, you know, put the initials on that that's that's how they want it standardized and that um, the chief operating officer really should manage procurement so that um, the city solicitor isn't sort of being an ad hoc um, chief operating officer in that respect the next page um, the background on the chief operating officer in uh, April of this year I submitted a petition to the City Council to create the chief operating officer position this is uh, somebody that will oversee capital procurement and information technology. Um, the CEO will be the designated chief procurement officer in the city, thus being able to oversee the development for 
uh, of contracts for construction projects and for goods and services, and uh, to designate authority to other employees in the city and to hire and oversee consultants as needed. Um, right now, our current chief procurement officer has designated limited ability to four um, department heads within the city to procure items in their departments, um, $10,000 and below. Um, these are the kinds of powers that the chief procurement officer has. So um, having a COO in charge, um, we can be much more nuanced and potentially work at giving um, greater power to more division heads, more training, more oversight, um, so that um, there isn't a bottleneck. Um, there was a couple of uh, quotes in here um, from the Calm Center that, that you can read, but essentially um, they do see this as a, a, a good move. Um, the next page has the budget um, for the Chief Operating Officer, which um, I'll be presenting to you after you hear from the Collins Center. I think that's probably good for you to kind of hear from them first and then um, see these be presented. But as you can see, um, we're looking at hiring a Chief Operating Officer. Um, I anticipate that $110,000 would be the maximum that we would have to spend on finding somebody. Um, there are a number of people um, throughout the Commonwealth that, for example, have been town managers or assistant town managers who have also been their designated IT and procurement folks. So they have a lot of management expertise as to seeing the whole picture and can help develop the capital plans, um, can develop the day-to-day -day workflow operations, and then be able to procure the technology and the capital needs and so on to be able to get those done quickly. The um, chief procurement officer um, is being phased out and that is being rolled into the chief operating officer position. Um, the deputy procurement officer continues to be funded by the schools. Um, the procurement officer, um, the person who is currently in that position is actually resigning at the end of May. Um, we're not looking to fill that position. Um, the assistant purchasing agent, we haven't had that in a few years. Um, the IT manager and assistance administrator are in the budget. Um, as well as the printer and there is a small light item for um, clerical that could also be used for help technician or um, any combination in which the chief operating officer sees fit. On the next page um, is the expenses. Um, this was pretty simple. Um, I combined the expenses in purchasing and in IT and I roll them over into one expense line item. I did reduce um, the IT contracted services by $10,000. Um, all of these things are subject to change. I know that we, we all approve a bottom line number in terms of expenses, so I expect a new um, chief operating officer, especially when we also create the IT steering committee to really direct uh, what kind of um, IT needs we, we need and where this money will be spent. So I know that's moving through that quickly. But again, you're going to be getting a much more detailed um, discussion when the call center comes and you can speak directly to them. And then during the budget hearing, um, you'll speak to me more about the chief operating officer position. So I'm just going to move into a um, sort of a 10,000 feet overview of the operating budget itself. So moving on to the next <coughs> page, uh, the next page after that. Um, this is the org chart. Um, there are currently, um, or as proposed, will be 18 direct reports to the mayor. Obviously, the chief operating officer is a new position that I'm proposing. Uh, the next page, this is also in the budget, except for um, I added on this little side data from 2009. So that 2009 data is actually not in your hard copy budget. But the, um, I was kind of curious to see in these uh, six or seven years how much the percentages have changed. Um, we have seen this uh, basically drops in as a percentage of the total expenditures. Schools are down 2%. Debt is down 1%. Um, where those essentially went is uh, police and fire up 1% and human services, which is the library, the senior center, um, veterans, that's up 1% as part of the budget. So there's been some slight shifts as to where we um, have expenditures. And I think a lot of that has to do with, um, if you remember, um, in uh, 2009, we had a major cut to the library. We also had major reductions in police and fire. So it's not necessarily that we reduced overall expenditures to the schools, it's just that we increased fire and police and human services more than everybody else, partly because we had cut them more than everybody else. So that's just showing a little bit of the history. Okay, moving on to um, the, these are summaries of the different sections and I'm just, Gave this to you in writing, just so you have. So the budget notes, um, 
not much has changed for the legislative branch. Um, there are some additional local election expenses, but you know, those can be explained in the budget. Um, under the executive department, there is a, a bit of a variation between um, 14, 15, and 16, and that primarily has to do with um, the $25,000 that we spent on the Collins Center outside audit. That was incorporated into the mayor's budget, so that shows the fluctuation. Essentially, everything is the same. Um, moving on to finance and administration, uh, the big change here is moving procurement and IT under a chief operating officer slash operations division. Um, going to debt service, um, you can see that the long-term debt um, costs have decreased. We anticipate that this is going to continue to decrease. Um, we talked about an addition, uh, I was not an addition, an opportunity to add projects by 2019. Um, so right now we're just working on, you know, what do we need? Um, what do we need for the police department? What do we need for the fire department? Um, how much do we want to spend on um, a renovated library? Um, how much do we want to spend on City Hall? Um, so we're not really looking to up this. I think this is going to continue a downward trend. And then in 2019 or in the future, hopefully we'll have um, been far enough along that once this, this number drops, we can start long-term borrowing again for these new major capital projects. Um, and then all those projects, um, those are going to be forwarded to the Capital Commission and then ultimately to the City Council for review and approval. Uh, the Community Development Department, um, this shows a added economic development director for a full year for fiscal year 16. Um, next page, human services. There are some added hours to part-time uh, people in veterans and council aging support staff. Um, I did cut $100,000 from the veterans benefits. Um, usually we gauge that later on the year and then uh, make adjustments then. And we also added a special events line item in recreation. Uh, this was something supported by the Parks Department and is detailed further in some of the slides in the budget. For Board of Health, um, housing moved out of Board of Health in, uh, uh, to community development in 2014. Um, I saw there was a $63,000. It sort of looks like they added staff, but they didn't. So there's actually no added staffing levels in Board of Health. All the increases are due to step raises and cost of living adjustments. Um, we settled a lot of contracts this year. Police Department. The staffing levels are the same for the full-time staff. Uh, we are adding a eight-person police reserve. Um, this is going to be a pilot program. We are requesting the council for this year fund the upfront expenses like um, getting the vests, getting the radios, and so on, um, and then being able to, uh, once we have those one-time upfront expenses, then we can add uh, reserve in the budget from year to year to supplement. Um, the chief will give a much more detailed discussion about the reserve force. You could certainly talk to him beforehand. I know it's a it's a new concept for Fitchburg. A number of other police departments are using it, and the chief can tell you specifically how we would deploy that here. Um, one thing to note: the contract is not settled for fiscal year 14, 15, and 16. This is really the big contract um, and one of the outstanding liabilities for the city. Um, we're trying. Um, we've gone to arbitration, mediation, um, so there is a process and we're in it right now. Um, so that um, in terms of the contract, we're trying to find ways to set aside funding to fund this contract. Um, the finance team has come up with some ways that would not greatly affect this budget and we'll talk more about that um, once we have a better idea. For the fire department, the staffing levels are also the same. Uh, we did settle this contract. The contract actually um, expires at the end of June, but we've already settled the contract for the next three years for fiscal year 16, 17, and 18. The contract for fiscal year 16 was settled at 1%, um, and also there is a reduction of three personal days. Um, this is for existing staff as well as um, future staff that have reduced their um, uh, personal days. This is actually going to help the overtime account for the fire department. Public Works. Um, this in, has actually the street light savings um, and the cost of the LED investment. So um, the overall cost of street lights is actually cut in half, but then the other half that makes up for a level budget is uh, the $100,000 plus for um, actually buying the LED infrastructure. We only have to pay that for a number of years, and once that goes away, then our street lights are going to cost just over 100000 uh, we also added traffic signals from building. I added $20,000 on top of 
the um, the budget from building. The problem with um, uh, traffic signals is that we have had a city electrician who is retiring. Um, he sort of became our pseudo traffic signal person. Because he's retiring, he's also leaving with him a lot of knowledge. We don't anticipate that um, hiring another electrical inspector will have traffic signal experience. Um, so therefore, we need to outsource this, and it's probably best put in um, the Public Works Department. We're giving Lenny $20,000 more because if you're contracting it out, I hate to say it, but it's probably going to, you're going to pay for um, a lot of the labor plus um, the expenses. So uh, the personnel is staying the same. So all the numbers are the same. Um, the increases are due to added contract and step increases. Building department, um, again, the, there's minor increases, same staff. It's due to step and cost of living increases. And of course, we move traffic signals out to DPW. For the school department, um, net school spending is a moving target. Uh, we're, we usually make adjustments to accommodate net school spending in the fall when we have better figures. The way it works is that if we fund above net school spending, then it doesn't count. Let's say if we fund above by 100000 then we don't roll that $100,000 over to next year's net school spending. But if we underfund by 100000 then we know that exact number to bring the budget up to. Uh, we are looking at ways to make contributions from the school budget um, from fiscal year 2015 funds. Again, something that the finance team is working on right now. And uh, we're also working on a lot of the school funding formulas. Um, right now, we believe that the school funding formulas are unfair to urban school districts like Fitchburg. They are giving more money to sort of suburban districts and away from urban areas. And there's also various revenue sources that we've been counting on. Um, for example, we just found out a few days ago that the kindergarten grant um, was cut from over $18 million to $1 million. So the statewide grant at $18 million is now $1 million. To put that in perspective, Fitchburg stands lose about $400,000 ourselves. So these kinds of cuts really add up. Um, and to be honest, this is where it hits the most. We see a lot of these, um, uh, these various uh, transportation charter school reimbursement, for example. I know there's a lot of talk about a charter school comes in. We're supposed to be reimbursed for the loss of revenue. The percentage that the charter schools are being reimbursed, which is supposed to be 100%, the state's only reimbursing us 57%. Um, so we have to pick up all those costs. Board of Health, um, this is the uh, the rubbish collection and disposal. This is per our contract. Um, we did make some minor um, adjustments downwards. Most of the savings usually comes from reducing yard waste pickup days. Um, sometimes we add those back in if we have uh, better numbers in terms of uh, revenue figures. Moving on to employee benefits. Um, the pension increases are anticipated. It's 564000 It's big, but we anticipate it. We have a schedule, so we know how it's going to go up every year, um, so we work on that. It's produced by the retirement board and their contractor. Um, the health care, as you can see, I lowered that number from the request. Um, the primary reason for lowering the request from 13.5 to 13.3 was that after the request was put in, um, our fiscal year 50 numbers came in significantly better than we anticipated. Um, so we just reduced the, uh, um, everything accordingly. Uh, miscellaneous expenses, most of these items are level funded. Uh, we plan to fund stabilization and snow and, uh, snow and ice out of free cash like we've done for most years. Um, moving on to the enterprise funds, the airport um, has um, some increases. Um, most of them are due to rent and fuel revenue increases. And then the expense side, there's 150000 in improvements added to expenses. As you know, they're doing a lot of work there. Most of the work is being funded by state and federal sources, but some of it, like at the airport terminal, the restaurant portion are things that we have to fund ourselves. In uh, wastewater, um, we've eliminated the chief engineering position. That individual is retiring, and the duties are going to be covered by um, two other people, the maintenance engineer and superintendent. Uh, for expenses, we are going to begin debt payments for a consent decree. So as you know, we've been borrowing, we've been spending a lot of money, and now we have the debt payments we have to pay off. And uh, we're also looking at um, doing more combined manhole separation. Um, we're looking at a $500,000 expense for this year, and then we're going to judge how much we can get done. But it's a pretty big number. 
Water Department, we're adding two people to the distribution crew. Um, we have a lot of catch up to do. There are uh, projects like hydrant flushing that we're behind on that we need to catch up on. We also are looking for ways to um, have in-house people so that we can lessen on-call contractors. First, you don't have to procure them, but second, it's actually cheaper to have some folks in-house, especially if we're doing a lot of it. Um, the Water and Wastewater Commission is also performing a rate study to look at revenues. Uh, right now, they're actually spending down retained earnings. Um, that can't continue for long. So they're gonna do a, a rate study, a revenue study, and they'll make some recommendations to the council. I don't know when that's coming. Um, they might have some more information. And then lastly, um, this is just from the budget, but this is the, uh, the staffing level trend. So you've seen this all before. Forward to the Finance Committee, Councilor Dina Talley. President of Finance met on May 12th and took up the following 8515 order transfer $500,000 from wastewater treatment expenses to wastewater treatment capital collection system repair. That was amended to 200000 and adopted as amended. 8615 transfer 500000 from wastewater treatment debt service to wastewater treatment capital collection system repair. That was adopted. 8715 transfer 90,000 from health insurance to accounts as follows 40,000 to employers FICA 40,000 to other employee benefits and 10,000 to general insurance that was adopted 8815 order appropriate $9,170 seem to be credited to fire equipment and repair and charge against available funds that was adopted 8915 order that the city of Fitchburg hereby approves the expenditure of funds from the federal emergency management agency for the fire assistance to firefighters grant in the approximate amount of $91,708 for the purposes of said grant that was adopted 90-15 transfer 30,000 to fire personal services overtime from fire personal services that was adopted and 9215, Councillor Paul Boschman to raise the fine to $50 for violation of the parking ban during a snow emergency that was denied. Motion to accept the report. We have a motion to second that the Finance Committee report be accepted. Speaking to the motion, Councillor Joseph. Just comment on the um, transfer to wastewater treatment and, the, and the, how much excess money they have in their budget. Um, I, through in the committee, we asked that the president send a letter we can get an update on what their budget looks like and where their um, where the sewer separation project is and stuff like that because it's just the, the retained earnings is good but the number the amount of money within the operating budget seems a little bit out of sort so I was just hoping we could get a better explanation of that we'll get an answer from the councilor thank you all those in favor aye, aye. all those opposed it is unanimous Orders 09715, order transfer $10,000 to police maintenance of building and police equipment and repair. Motion to second that 09715 up to and including 10215 be sent to the Finance Committee. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? It is unanimous. be sent to the committee as a whole for the budget hearings. Motion to second that 10315 up to including uh, 1015 be sent to the council as a whole committee for budget hearings. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Is unanimous. Petitions. Second. Motion to second that 11115 up to including 12015 be sent to their respective committees. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? It is unanimous. Councilors, before the meeting began, I uh, had an oversight and I'd like to make that correction now. I would like this council to um, take a moment of silence um, in memory of Sam Pollock. Sam was a member of the Fitchburg School Committee for years. He was an educator for his whole adult life and a referee for over 50 years um, assisting the youth in our community and unfortunately Sam passed away the last week and if we could have a moment of silence. Thank you. Any other business? Council Kushmerick. Just one announcement uh, concerning the Ward 4 and 5 cleanups. So the Ward 4 cleanup will be held on Saturday, May 30th. 
uh, at 8 a.m. to approximately 2 p.m. Uh, the meeting spot has been selected. Uh, it'll be by the, the steps on Pritchard Street leading to the Longs Joe Middle School. Um, there's over 300 volunteers participating from the Crossroads um, Church, uh, as well as uh, countless volunteers from the uh, Reimagine North of Maine. So I'd like to encourage and challenge all my residents uh, to be out there in force and, uh, and have as large an impact on that area as possible. Thank you. Councilor Joseph. On Sunday, I had the opportunity to uh, play miniature golf in our library facility. It was a great time. There was a lot of families there. I think they had over 200 people that showed up uh, between Saturday and Sunday for a free round of golf and just a little fun. I mean, there was a lot of people that I that were heard that said they'd never been in the library and it was a good opportunity for, for the friends to bring people in. Friends of the library did a great job of setting it up and it, it was fun. So uh, just a good job by the friends of the library and thank you very much for the work they did. Excellent. Did you break pa? <laughs> did you break pa? Um, let's just say there was a couple of snowmen. <laughs> one hole in one. Hey. Any other business? Motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you, councilors.